Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off as we've got a lot to discuss with Intel's XE GPUs for gaming. Intel are certainly going to be a welcome addition to the gaming GPU market. At the end of the day, I think additional competition only is going to benefit us. But I've been hearing some very interesting things of Intel's plans moving forward. And one of those is that, yes, Intel will certainly release a higher uh, tile variant of their GPUs as the gaming variants are only going to be a single tile. 512 execution units has been very well established at this point for multiple leaks from months back, even from Intel's own drivers. But for higher variants to exist, Intel themselves, or more specifically Intel Graphics and Raja Kodori's team, need to prove to Intel's upper management that they can compete in gaming, or really it could be a case of these products just really become targeted towards data center. And what I find even more interesting about this too is that Intel seem to only want to create their own variants of cards. To be crystal clear here, from my understanding, Intel are not necessarily going to pursue putting the cards out through AIBs. Now, there does seem to be some resistance to this internally at Intel, and personally, I would prefer that they do offer AIB variants. For example, you know, the, the MSIs or the Zotax or Asus or whomever, because I think that additional choice is only ever a good thing. But Intel don't seem to want to do this at the moment, and they seem to be quite careful moving forward, wanting to really control the messaging and just kind of, you know, really control the cards and the products themselves in these early days. I'm going to be very interested to see how this works out, because one of the benefits, of course, of an AIB being involved in your launch, not only does it allow you to have, you know, kind of a wider range of products, you know that there's going to be that person who's way more than happy to spend twice the MSRP on, for example, an RTX 1390, just because it's got the highest clock frequencies or whatever. But the other benefit is that you also have that additional marketing behind you. A company like MSI or whatever are obviously going to be more than happy to tweet about a, a launch that's upcoming. And yeah, Intel seem to be not wanting to do that. And I find that rather curious, to be honest with you. We already know that Intel's cards will be pretty feature packed. Uh, we've seen Raja Kodori basically confirm, uh, although it was of course via an image on social media, that the GPUs do support things like mesh shaders and hardware-based ray tracing, DirectX 12 Ultimate basically. But let's face it, as a GPU which is launching at the latter part of this year, it looks like it's gonna be the end of this year, it's not too surprising. Personally speaking, I'm not going to be shocked if they do postpone the launch a little bit, simply because of all of the delays that are going on. And yeah, it does seem to be on TSMC's 6NM process, that's what I'm hearing as well. And, well, yeah, we all know what's going on with TSMC at the moment. So I really wish it was on a different manufacturing, or well, a different manufacturer was involved or it was being, you know, developed internally, but we all know the stories behind that. So yeah, it is what it is. And that's kind of a shame because what I was hoping for is that we would have a more reliable, readily available option, as I don't think these manufacturing shortages are going to be going away anytime soon. In public, a lot of these companies are stating that they feel that the shortages could end, you know, the second half of this year. But frankly, you know, the discussions I'm having under the table, a lot of them really don't believe that. And they know that we're going to be in for a wild ride. They do feel, of course, that it's going to get better, but it's not going to be quite as smooth sailing as it was, let's say, a couple of years ago, when you could just easily walk into a shop and pick up whatever you want. I've also discussed performance targets and pricing multiple times at this point. A couple of weeks ago, I leaked that the GPU is going to be between the 3070 to 3080, but it really is kind of up in the air at the moment, and most of it does seem, as I've already covered, um, down to drivers and just how much they can kind of crank out of the GPU in terms of clock frequency versus yields and all of the other normal kind of stuff that goes into the development of a GPU. And Intel do seem quite happy at the moment with the progress of their cards, much more confident, well, at least I am anyway, in what I'm hearing versus, let's say, six months ago, where 
quite frankly, it seemed kind of disastrous. I was hearing massive problems with the GPUs, particularly when it was coming to things like power consumption and heat. I was hearing that they performed decently, bless them, but they were going to basically require you to invest in your own nuclear power station to be able to run it. However, that does seem to be getting a lot better, which is obviously a good thing. And I don't think that Intel do need a card, even if we say that the GPU launches, worst case scenario here, so Q1 and it's RTX 3070 levels of performance. Uh, I've already leaked the pricing is uh, internally targeted towards two to 300 US dollars. Again, that was a video a couple of weeks ago, I believe, but, um, that was also in relation to a lot of stuff for RDNA 3, as well as NVIDIA's Lovelace. And Lovelace, well, we already know now that NVIDIA have basically stated that uh, Ampere Next, which of course we all know is Lovelace, is going to launch next year. So there's going to be a rather large shuffling of uh, GPU products over the next couple of years, I feel. I'm hoping that Intel does manage to prove itself in the GPU market, as frankly, I think that the additional competition is going to be worth it. I just think that it's going to be a lot like, you know, Raja kind of did with Polaris back in the day when he was working at AMD. Basically, you had cards like the RX 480, which competed favorably against, um, let's say, the previous generation flagship products. So for NVIDIA, that would have been like the 980, for example. However, compared to Pascal, which obviously, um, you know, kind of released around the time that Polaris did, well, Polaris, the 480 card that is, was roughly, roughly on par with GTX 1060. Although, of course, it did depend on, you know, the title and, you know, various other things like, you know, graphic settings, resolution and so on. So it seems like Raja is going to continue that, uh, this train going forward. However, I am hearing that NVIDIA and AMD are definitely concerned by Intel moving forward in the data center. And now we're going to switch our focus onto Intel's Alder Lake, aka the 12th generation. While Rocket Lake has not had exactly a ton of fans, although I maintain that the 11400 looks pretty decent for a, a budget gaming focused processor, Alder Lake could be very different. And yeah, there is quite a lot of positive news coming out regarding Alder Lake. One of those is that we've been hearing that the IPC gain is quite significant, and Raichu on Twitter, who's been pretty damn accurate for a lot of stuff in the past, he claims that we could be seeing just a smidgen under a 25% leap in IPC. However, um, Intel themselves were stating it could be around a 20% again. So what's going on here? Well, most likely the reason that Intel is stating it's only 20%, whereas Raichu is stating it's 25-ish, is because we're going to get slight regression in clock frequency, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, clock frequency is great and all, but if you've got high enough IPC, it can make up some of the difference. After all, look what's happened with, say, Zen 3 versus Intel's under Skylake architecture, right? Yeah. Zen 3, I think you'll agree, it's doing okay, bless it. But there's also further information too with uh, Intel's Alder Lake. And full credit to Intslat X64, I believe that's how you pronounce their uh, Twitter username. And you can see that um, they've basically created a rather nice mock-up of what we're probably going to be seeing from Intel's Alder Lake S. This is the top, uh, sorry, the first one you're going to be seeing is the 8, uh, eight plus 8 configuration. So that's 16 cores, 24 threads, because you've got Gracemont and Golden Cove processors. So if you mosey your eyes over to the left, you can see that there are 8 Gracemont processors all snuggled together lovingly with their own L1 caches and stuff like that. And then in the middle of the, you know, the Gracemont block, you can see a rather large, hefty amount of L2 and L3 cache. And then to the right of that, of course, you can uh, easily spot the Golden Cove uh, CPU cores, again, with a pretty hefty amount of cache. And on the uh, right side of the image is the GT1 um, uh, graphics block. I honestly don't know if Alder Lake is going to be enough to compete against AMD. Um, I, I feel more confident about it than what I was with Rocket Lake, which is obviously just essentially a backport onto the 14nm process, and there was only a certain amount that they could do with you know that given the you know the the design constraints. But Alder Lake could be pretty decent, and I think that Intel 
know that they really have to hit hard with Alder Lake because otherwise they're really going to just lose all customer confidence in the shorter term anyway, possibly even the longer term when it comes to customer facing desktop and possibly even mobile products. The good news for Intel is that Alder Lake is launching end-ish of this year, whereas Warhol, again, is going to launch end-ish, excuse me, of this year too, but it's nothing vastly improved over the Zen 3 architecture. It's probably going to be AM4 based and IPC gains around 5-ish percent, possibly a little higher if you're very lucky and the moon aligns and a modest clock frequency bump as well. Now, this is not to say that AMD are going to be really behind and Intel are going to be kicking AMD in the shin, but it does mean that they're going to be on a more even playing field. And I suspect that, you know, there's going to be a good argument to be had anyway of which offering is the best. And there's also quite a lot of interesting stuff that Intel are pushing here with, of course, the big, small architecture. And also, of course, the uh, hardware scheduling, which is said to be inside the CPU. Ultimately, I'm going to be very curious to see what happens if you run a really highly threaded load on this processor, just in terms of performance and what the kind of scaling will be versus, let's say, just a big core variant and a big little variant, a big small variant. Um, and yeah, it's a very interesting product stack. I know that, um, you know, eight cores or 60 threads are probably going to be absolutely fine for gaming, you know, for the next while anyway. Like, there's a reason that AMD themselves are most likely topping out at 16 cores, even for Zen 4. So I think that Intel are definitely going to be better off with Alder Lake. But it's kind of, the thing is, Intel are going to be facing an extremely aggressive uh, roadmap from AMD. And it's not just that Intel and AMD are competing against one another, of course, which is kind of bad enough, but there is also a lot to be said for what's happening with ARM right now. And this is speculation on my part, so please don't take it as a leak. I feel that if there is another console generation and, you know, it doesn't all become cloud streaming, and at the end of the day it might, but I don't think we're quite ready yet for this to be the case. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see an x86 processor, instead we see an ARM-based processor simply because of power, consumption and other concerns. Again, this is not a leak, this is just pure speculation on my part, but you can quite easily emulate x86 code on an ARM-based processor, and so this could be a way for, you know, the next-gen consoles to kind of make their debut. I'll be interested to see whether this is the case and ultimately I could be completely and utterly wrong. And again, because ARM is such a big deal at the moment with the recent uh, announcements from uh, NVIDIA and Grace, well, I don't think it takes too much of a genius to realize that Intel themselves kind of know that they're not just competing at the moment against Team Red. But anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. You click the likey button because it's the YouTube land. And I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.